Nut Nerd Podcast, Episode 274. Your experience may vary. Welcome to the Nut Nerd Podcast. I'm Nate Heath, and we are here to help you tech better. Here with me, as always, Mr. Dave Baylor. Well, hello there, Nate. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to be joining us uh, this episode. He was out of frame, as we call it in the biz on the video. Well, the thing is, is I'm always standing here looking at the camera, waiting for my introduction. And I'm like, ah, I got to make a more make an entrance intro. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And for those of you that do t- tune into our video feed on YouTube to watch the podcast, I will take this moment. I know a lot of you do that just to see which plaid shirt I'm wearing that day. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I little pro tip, Walmart has their summer line in stock of their George plaid short sleeve (laughs) t-shirts. So I am wearing one of the new 2021 line from Walmart at a, uh, the lovely price of $9.98. And George is the brand? Yes. George is Walmart's in-house men's one of their men's clothing brands, but I know very few people care about that. But if you like short sleeve plaid shirts, swing by Walmart, they've got a couple new designs this year. So good to know. Yes. And uh, I guess maybe we should start talking about some technology and maybe some follow up as we always start off with. Uh, My pick of the week just a couple of weeks ago was Ted Lasso. And Jason Sudeikis won Best Comedy Actor for uh, his role as Ted Lasso at the Golden Globe. So another uh, award for an Apple TV Plus show. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a good show and the Golden Globes prove it because, you know, <laughs> win a Golden Globe, it's got to be the best, right? Yeah, everybody knows that the Golden Globes are like the top of the pile. Yes, the golden standard for award shows, right? Nice. Um, nice. And I was going to say mentioning apple tv plus i didn't even put a link in the show notes uh you know we have one million plus streaming tv um there's a new one discovery plus that my parents Hmm. they love okay uh you know the planet earth and that kind of stuff and discovery plus is another plus named streaming service Hmm. So if you're interested in that, it's all, you know, they, I saw an article that said reality based and it's not the bachelor, but it's based <laughs> on mostly nature and that type of uh, reality, but all that stuff discovery does so well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, in a very quick follow-up, we've talked now for months since December about Google updating their main apps with the uh, iOS privacy labels. Well, I saw another article this week. They still quite haven't managed to put out those updates uh, for like YouTube and Gmail to have Mm -hmm. those privacy labels. And uh, I think it was John Gruber at Daring Fireball said, we know it's bad. Just put it out. You know, like, I don't know (laughs) what the, because they had said at least a month ago, oh, another week or two, we'll have them out. And so it's, are they like sitting there looking at the privacy label that they would need to put in and go, oh my goodness, nobody's ever going to use us anymore. We can't update our apps. My guess is, is they're trying to re-engineer the apps so that they don't have to be so explicit with the privacy, uh, even though they're probably on the back end do everything the same. They want to make the apps look a certain way so that their privacy labels can match so that they don't get caught doing some stuff. Now that's just me speculating, but my guess is they're probably trying to tweak some things so that it's less verbose so that people don't know what's really going on. That's a a good call. And uh, we obviously talk about podcasts a lot. We've talked to, about Spotify and their move into podcasts and all the money and companies and everything that they've acquired to do that. Well, there's a report out on uh, podcast statistics. And this report is saying that Spotify will pass Apple's podcast listenership uh, or the share, I guess, of podcast listening um, this year. So they're pretty close right now. Uh, Now, it says in the article, monthly podcast listeners, and I do have, I pay for Spotify. I do not listen. I think I've maybe listened 
well, maybe to a not nerd episode just to boost our stats. And then I think there was one episode of the Joe Rogan podcast after he moved over there where there's a guest I wanted to listen to. So I did that one. But being in the Spotify app, I don't know how in the course of a month you couldn't accidentally listen to a podcast because <laughs> they jam yeah. it down your, even if you're just trying to listen to music, you cannot escape podcasts, which is actually, I like having my separate pocket cast app for podcasts and then music somewhere else but apparently Same. people are enjoying it so this is just my own bias saying this can't be possible but maybe it is and maybe spotify really is uh getting a good return on their investment for all these all this investment in the podcast sphere well one question i would have is just being a subscriber to spotify does that include you in a podcast listener or is it are they counting the hours of or minutes listened to on actual podcasts. Like what yeah. is, what are I they I think saying? they said that, that listen to at least one podcast per month is mm -hmm. the numbers that, which I could not imagine a world where I only listen to one <laughs> podcast a month. So that's yeah. why I think it, it might include some accidental uh, listenership in there. Right. Right. Um, and Libsyn, the, where we host our podcast, they release statistics and for all the shows that they host, Apple is far and away uh, the highest um, share of listening, but Spotify ha does have exclusives now. So mm -hmm. um, there, that does draw people in. I mean, Joe Rogan, whatever you think about the guy, he has a lot of people that listen to his podcast, millions. Uh, the top podcasts is, or at least one of the top ones, as far as I know. Um, and so just having that alone as an exclusive could make a big difference for. And if somebody's going to uh, unseat Apple from the crown, uh, the, the chair, then that's okay. Yes. I mean, yeah. it yeah. happens. If yep. it happens, it happens. Well, and Apple has not, uh, you know, they've been, a, interestingly for Apple, very free and open with their podcast uh, solution. It's basically a big directory and they have their app and you can listen to stuff uh, where Spotify is a little more focused on making money off of the podcasts. Uh, Apple has not really done that so far. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe they don't care. Uh, maybe yeah. that's not important to them because there's a good chance if you're listening in Spotify, you're doing it on an iPhone anyway. So <laughs> that's probably true. And they're getting a portion of the subscription. So actually, maybe they want everybody to be in Spotify because <laughs> then they get their 30% of that $9.99 a month. And yeah, oh, I could go on for days. <laughs> Yes, you could. Yes. And you know who else could go on for days? Dave's Pro Tip of the Week. That is absolutely true. If it's talking about a topic that I'm invested in and I want to communicate about, you can't shut me up. I just go yes. on and on and on. And I never stop. And I just go on and on and on. And I keep talking. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, today, I thought we would talk about um, a little niche again. This is with messages on your iPhone or your iPad. Um, and I think you can even do it on your Mac. Um, ye, well, the article I'm seeing is just for iOS, but <laughs> reply to a sp specific message on your iPhone, iPad, and iPod touch. Like who has those still like, yes. for the one kid out there yeah. with the Amish family that gave him an iPod <laughs> touch. So um, here's how this works. You and I have just thousands of messages that go by yes and i might uh be busy you know i'm busy once in a while i just don't have all day to listen to rarely. you. rarely yeah but i go through and i'll be like oh nate sent me 12 messages and one up here was for a certain topic and then he's moved on to three other topics <laughs> to where i'm topping uh typing down Never. At the bottom. yeah i know and so i might go you know what i want to reply to that specific thing he said up here without making him scroll way back and confuse him. So there's a way to do this and you can reply to a specific message on your iOS devices. And this is how you do it. First, you open up your message conversation. So you and I would have our conversation. And then um, let's say you said, can you watch Rex this weekend? That was your question. And that was like six hours ago. Well, I would click and hold that bubble and uh, a little reply button will come up. It's one of those little left facing arrows with a little swoopy bottom, kind of the mm -hmm. reply button. You click that 
you type your message and you hit send. Now on my end, your reply is going to be coupled with the original message request so that I can see, oh, he's replying to this message and this is what he said regarding this particular thing, not the six hours of typing that he's done since. So Nate, have you ever used this reply to an individual message before? I have not, but it got me thinking. So I opened up my phone and I think other people that I'm in conversations with have done it, whether they knew it or not specifically. <laughs> yeah. um, my wife and Wes, uh, I knew in Wes, so I went in and looked and he had replied to a link that I had shared with him. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that's intentional or just part of his workflow. Um, my guess that, with Wes, it's intentional. He probably knew yes. how to do it. Yes. And I don't, uh, I'm very fortunate to not have a lot of group text messages that I'm mm -hmm. part of, but just in one in one conversations, it makes a lot of sense. Well, and I did look on my Mac in messages on Big Sur. And if I right click, there is a reply option there yes. as well. So it does yeah. look like you can do it on the Mac. Yeah, I thought you could, but this, uh, this is an, a support article from Apple and it didn't specifically mention mm. that. So I didn't want to assume that it did. Now, Funny that you mentioned group messages because part of this whole new um, capability is you can also mention people who are mm, in your group mm. message. So let's say it's you, me, and Wes, and we're having this chat back and forth. I can say, yeah, Wes, and his little uh, contact card bubble would pop up because uh. it's it's listening to the message and go, oh, he mentioned Wes. He's probably talking about the Wes in this thing and it'll pop up. And just like on Facebook or some other apps, you can tap that and it'll put an inline uh, indication that you are mentioning him specifically. And that works on the back end so that he can set his phone to say, I want to mute this conversation unless someone mentions me specifically, then send me a notification. So there's all these nuanced things that you can do now. And you and I don't do this a lot, but I know that there are groups of usually younger people who have just threads and threads with 10, 20, 30 people yeah. in them. And they're just constantly going like it's never not going. <laughs> and so having the option to one reply to a specific topic that was mentioned and two mentioning people individually so that they are aware is a very useful feature that's why a couple of weeks ago when i said apple already has a social media platform it's called messages so uh, they just keep expanding it and keep doing more and more things so if you've got an ios device maybe try this out with your friends and family you do have to be using ios 14 ipod Oh, I'm sorry, iPad OS 14. And then if you have your iPad, iPod touch, it has to be on iOS 14 also. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the new haps. That's what's going on in the nice. world of messages. Yes. It is a great tip. Anything to make uh, messages more clearer because a lot gets lost in translation on those often mm -hmm. uh, or in conversation. Well, let's move on to our takes of the week. Uh, there's been a lot of buzz around this and you, Actually, I almost knocked my phone off the desk there. I'm so excited. Uh, yeah. But there is a new feature from MyHeritage, which is a genealogy site called Deep Nostalgia. Nostalgia, nostalgia. Um, <laughs> that word. And what this is, it's a very interesting. And the one you sent me, it worked very well. It's very creepy. Um, but it takes a photo. And the idea is that you would take that old sepia photo of your great grandfather, you would upload it into their site. Mm -hmm. And then it animates it. And it kind of does this kind of moves around. the face around maybe blinks and mm -hmm. uh but it's a it's really interesting i've heard people say if you do it with like somebody you know it's kind of creepy i think it's yeah. kind of creepy anyways but it is a cool way to add a little life uh to a photo and it it works pretty well for just you know being on their website now you do have to have a an account with them mm -hmm. and i think they have what a 14-day trial uh, so you can try this out. I don't know if you can use this service for free. So there is a free tier. However, uh, this animated thing, you I did it three times. And then it's like, hey, if you want to keep using this feature, 
why don't you switch to one of our paid plans? And so if you do do this and you sign up just for a free account to try it out, be careful with the pictures you do it with because – like I said, I just tried all these random ones, yeah, and, yeah. and I'm like, oh, I wasted oh, it on that try. one. I didn't yes. know there was going to be a limit. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a bummer that they, but it is, you know, it's a cool feature. So they really want you to buy into their service. And I did also hear this week that um, Francisco Partners is to buy My Heritage for six hundred million dollars. Mm. So uh, kind of interesting that this news comes out, and then in the same. Uh, time frame that they're being purchased. And uh, I don't do a lot of genealogy stuff, but I know there are a lot of people into it. And this seems like it's a good option for uh, tracking some of that information and finding out about your ancestors. Yeah, I've used like Ancestry.com and a couple of those other ones. And they, they work fine. I, this is the first time I've done my heritage. And I didn't really like that there was that gotcha. Because I, I was yeah. thinking I could just do as many as I wanted. And it's like, ah, oh, you got to pay us. My guess is is there are probably already existing third-party iPhone apps that do something very similar that yes. you could download and use. Um, I've I've used other AI technologies in the past to colorize photos, mm. to um, sharpen photos, to replace features of photos, uh, so that you don't have to spend hours and hours in Photoshop. So this AI um, affecting old footage and old photos is it's we're on the cusp of it yeah. in, in the future. It's just going to be like, there is no such thing as an old photo. Yeah. It's all been up res uh, to 4k 60 frames a second. And it looks as beautiful as the day it was shot. So yes. Yep. That is true. Uh, well, square, um, the money <laughs> company mm -hmm. that many businesses use it to take payments. They have those tablet things that you'll see at restaurants and everywhere. And then they have the square cash, which uh, we had talked about in the past. Uh, interesting news. They are acquiring the majority of Tidal music service. Jay-Z was uh, instrumental, pun intended, mm -hmm. in starting that one. Um, and it's being purchased for $297 million. And I also will mention Square is owned by Jack Dorsey. Yes, at Jack on Twitter, the founder of Twitter. Um, but yeah, interesting. I'm slightly worried on this one because my DJ software that I use that used to use Spotify, and then they switched over to Tidal as, you know, I can pull up any song on Tidal while I'm DJing and just mix it right in. Uh, so now I'm worried that something might change with title and that might go away because it does make, uh, finding songs much easier and has me collecting a lot less music since I have that built in. But now, Nate, you're just going to have to go old school analog, get two turntables yeah. and a bunch of records and just play this one and then fade into this one with your little fader switch. Yeah. Now you're going to have to get like a semi tractor trailer. <laughs> I know. Yes. LPs to do this, but I'm, I have confidence. There are people that would say that I am not a real DJ because I do not still do that. And mm -hmm. the holistic cost just does not make out, make sense. I do have turntables and I do have some vinyl around, but transporting that is not something that uh, taking my laptop is much easier mm -hmm. and having an internet connection. Remember um, when you have to have two iPods and, like, oh yes <laughs> i've done it all i've done two cd players yeah. and all kinds of fun stuff uh but on the square story besides acquiring title another interesting story that kind of got put aside because of the big title you know jay-z's involved we got to cover mm -hmm. that they are also now officially their own bank uh wow. they announced this a while ago that they were going to be set up as a financial institution and that actually went through this week so not only are they processing all these payments they are now their own bank too so hmm. uh square should have bought some square stock if you can do that but uh we'll see see where it all goes yes we will uh, and quickly, I saw um, this this week, all 270 U.S. Apple stores are open for the first time since March 2020. Wow. Uh, so, and that's various states of opening. I know that you visited the da newly reopened downtown Portland one, and it looks like, what did you say it looked like? Well, they likened it to a bank, yes. but that's just the inside. The outside is like some type of 
Um, <laughs> if you've ever played Half-Life 2, uh, where all the cities are locked down with these big uh, cement things and metal yes. barriers, and you have to go through like a chain link gate to get in, and then you got to line up along like a plywood wall. Uh, you know, because they don't want somebody to break I the think glass. The word windows. is dystopian <laughs> yeah. that you're looking for. It, yeah. Or it looks much like the U.S. Capitol building at the moment. With yeah. yeah, they've got this large fence. But if you remember back to June, uh, they were completely looted. All the huge, mm -hmm. beautiful windows were broken, and everything was taken out of the store. So yeah, uh, this is why we can't have nice things. Yes. Um, but it is open. Once you can get through the security blockades uh, yes. you enter into a very bank-like structure with a couple little teller windows with a few products to make them look nice and some plexiglass displays and then you talk under the shielded window because nobody <laughs> pull can down hear. your mask yeah because nobody can hear <laughs> through the plexiglass the purpose. Uh. Um, so <laughs> so anyway it was it was fun exchanging a computer through the two inch slat <laughs> underneath i'm like well it's a good thing you made these computers thinner i yes. be able to maybe throw it over the top or something yeah. oh, but man. it was quite an experience but yeah but yes they're open yes your experience may vary yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly and dave your favorite topic dji has yeah. released a new first person view point drone fpv <laughs> yeah first person view so th a while back, they released a controller and a headset with, mm. it looks like something from out of sci-fi. It's got these antennas, like you look like an alien insect wearing these things. And the idea was you set it to the frequency of your homemade drone and you can use it to fly around and it used their special technology so that there was low latency mm. and it just worked great like, you know, their Mavic drones do and all their other drones that they have. Well, Everyone knew this was coming. They've built their own FPV drone unit to go with the headset and the controller. And one of the things that makes it different from others that you might build yourself is that the camera that's recording the beautiful 4K footage is the same camera that's sending back visual information oh. to your headset. Usually what happens is you've got kind of a low resolution channel locked in so that you can see what's going on but it's not pretty it's like watching analog tv or whatever uh but you've got like a gopro strapped to the top of it that's recording everything at 4k and then when uh, you get back home you, you you hope that you had pressed go on the <laughs> on the gopro and you take the sd card out well now it's all integrated just like all the rest of their drones and those things go fast i think the speed limit that the F is it FAA? Yeah, FAA allows on those is it might be a hundred miles an hour, it might be ninety miles an hour. Wow. But I watched one video a guy was he had it up to like eighty five miles an hour. So this is not a toy. This is not for the faint of heart. This is not for the cinematographer or photographer. This is for pure sport racing, having fun, doing all this stuff. But do not be tempted if you're an just a drone enthusiast to get one of these because you will probably one break it <laughs> two probably break some laws running yes. it and three you could hurt somebody because at 85 miles an hour it doesn't matter if the blade cuts somebody just the blunt force trauma <laughs> of yeah. hitting somebody with one of those things so uh please be careful out there with all of your drones but you can just go down to the store and buy one now it's it's wow. very simple you don't have to build your own in some you know, back room somewhere of your shop with a bunch of wires and soldering irons. Very cool. Uh, Dave, I keep hearing about them and I'm trying to understand them. Non-fungible tokens. Are you aware of this whole world that is happening around us online? Well, like you, I've, I've merely listened to other podcasts and, and, try to get information about it but it's basically a way using bit uh no, no what blockchain not bit, blockchain technology yes uh to verify authenticity and ownership so it's not really exchanging money it is verifying that object a belongs to person b and that's part of this blockchain and it can be authenticated so that person b could go and say i own this thing and I want to sell it to you. And here's my authentication 
yeah. of my ownership of this thing. So that's kind of what it is. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's just blown up and part of it is just, you know, how weird this last year has been. Uh, but this story that um, I found from Reuters, it says in October, 2020, Miami based art collector, Pablo Rodriguez Frail spent almost $67,000 on a 10 second video artwork that he could have watched for free online. Last week, he sold it for 66 million dollars so this is just a video that think of any video on the web one of the big ones is uh was it top shots it's a site where they sell you the authenticity that you will own an nba clip like a highlight lebron mm -hmm. james dunking. Like doing a dunk or something yeah. yeah big block shot or something you buy the right for and often this stuff's going for tens of thousands of dollars. Now this one that sold for six point six million dollars is by an artist, Beeple, Mike Winkleman. Neither of those names are good, <laughs> but <laughs> then you authenticate. And I was listening to a podcast last night, and Lindsay Lohan has some non fungible token. I mean this. If we have talked about the fact that Bitcoin and all of that stuff is just this digital bubble of who knows what, this stuff seems like what, like <laughs> how much pe money does do people have to spend on this stuff? Now, no offense, if anybody, please, if any of our listeners have <laughs> purchased any non fungible tokens, please share uh, your story with us. I could see Jared maybe doing it for some lego video or something like that or but i i just this is a, this is for the world of the lifestyle of the rich and famous these yeah. are for people who have so much money that they will buy not a digital good per se but the bragging rights of the digital good saying that i own this so those nba shots for example i don't think that owning the clip gives you consent or authorization to go to like the Disney channel and say, Hey, you're doing a documentary about basketball. Yeah. I want to sell you the clip to put in your documentary and you have to pay me money for the usage rights of this. No, the NBA still owns all distribution of this product. Yeah. You just have bragging rights. It's like a, a certificate of authenticity is all you're yeah. getting is a piece of paper. Yeah. It's, it's like you're buying a stock and sometimes there's only one share of the stock in like a, in this article, 208,000 for LeBron James slam dunk 208,000. What, what do you do with it? I, you sell it to I somebody don't else. Know. <laughs> I, I please, if somebody like, I just don't see how this, and now, you know, like say the sports card world or the comic book world, like having the number one issue in of a rare comic book mm -hmm. is extremely valuable, but you also have something. It's a tangible good. Tangible where this, yeah. this is all digital. So I just, yeah, if I have Superman, my mind at all. Yeah. If I have Superman number one, I can trade that physical good for a million dollars yeah but if i have a digital copy of D superman one on comiXology that i purchased for 99 cents from amazon uh one i couldn't sell it to you because i don't have the mechanism to do so but it's replicable i mean yeah. there's an unlimited number of copies of the digital version of that so anyway i don't understand it either but i guess like bitcoin does bitcoin really exist uh, it yeah. exists in the computer and you're buying a Bitcoin, but you're, there's nothing tangible. I don't know. Yeah. And I, I saw something that Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks and tech billionaire or whatever he is, he's actually made NFTs out of some of his tweets. Like he's selling <laughs> an oh. NFT of his tweets and God i just did a google you, search to try to find that and there's an art uh, headline that says mark cuban crazy nft prices will settle down over time but the tech the tech is here to stay mm. uh so I, I i this one is so weird to me uh i'd rather have the money yeah yes yes and 
a security and privacy story. Um, We aren't doing our segment anymore, but I came across this one. It just happened uh, within the last few days, early March here. The headline, at least 30,000 with a T, (laughs) U.S. organizations. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Instead of Mausend or Bausend, (laughs) Thousand uh, newly hacked or U.S. organizations newly hacked via holes in Microsoft's email software. So uh, this is a, (laughs) in the article, it actually says, an unusually aggressive Chinese cyber espionage unit that's focused on stealing email from victim organizations. And uh, so they did this massive push and 30,000. So it was a hole in Microsoft. So you might have an Outlook email account or your work might use Microsoft 365 or whatever they're using. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the way we used to do it, and obviously a lot of people still do, is a Microsoft Exchange server where you actually have a server in your business that's running your email. um, And there was a, a vulnerability in their Exchange server software that Microsoft had um they released an emergency security update but 30,000 organizations have been hit by this and it wow. looks like uh pretty much gives them access to your email server uh to do most likely nefarious things with hmm. it so uh that's a that's a big one and we might uh hear more about that and some of the fallout from that but yeah on the tail end of the solar winds attack and all the havoc that that caused that I saw something the government's going to be fixing the issues from that for years with mm-hmm. that breach but uh this new wow. one so uh I, I don't know what the answer is as we always say but uh not good yeah the answer is not that for sure <laughs> yes yes uh but and this is the reason we do this one, our bonus odd take of the week after the security and privacy to distract you a little bit. And this is one you found, and I would love to know how you found it, probably on Reddit. It is yes. vol, V-O-L-E dot W-T-F, that and, lovely W-T-F <laughs> top level domain name. Yeah, everybody wants that one. So vol, uh, I think a vol is a type of rodent, like a mouse, right? Mm. Um, so I'm anyway. familiar with moles, not voles, but <laughs> yeah. I'll take your word for it. Uh, so the interesting part of this is, uh, when I first go into it, I use an ad blocker all the time. Of oh course. yeah. I mean, I'm famous for, for doing that. It says ad blocker detected. Well done. Very sensible. Nowadays, a good ad blocker helps protect against invasive tracks, tracking energy waste, malware, scams, crypto mining, etc. Low five the sloth to continue. And there's a picture of a sloth. <laughs> nice. And I have to low five him with my mouse pointer. And then I can enter into the site. I just I've never seen anyone praising yes. an ad blocker before. That is cool. So what first brought me to this was it's at the top of my deck. It's a bunch of different apps. It was can you beat 1024 bytes of JavaScript. It's a chess game um, that has the oh, likeness wow. of the lady who played in um, The Queen's Gambit. I have mm. no idea what her name is. And it's in CGA graphics, just cyan, magenta, and white, or black, I think. And white would be one too, I guess those four colors. Anyway, this is a JavaScript version of chess that was built with 10. Tw- 1,024 bytes of computer memory. Wow. I'm, and I, I'm like, I don't know how it works, but you click on it and uh, it's a chess game. Also on this site are just a million different little toys yes. and things. I really only played the chess game. I played through it and I, of course, lost. Uh, a, a As chess we game. talked about last week, our <laughs> yeah. chess prowess. A, a, a chess game with very, that's very simplistic and probably has a very simple AI beat the snot out of me. But I mean, there's other stuff here. There, the, the one that caught my eye, of course, was David Hasselhoff. And it's actually, I didn't even realize I tried that game, but it's Knight's Tour, Michael Knight from Kit, mm-hmm. or Knight Rider, Michael yeah. Knight. 
and Kit from Knight Rider. Uh, Moving like a chess knight, take David Hasselhoff's music to the whole of Germany. So I had no clue I was doing, but you basically, there's a grid and you can only move like a chess knight and you have to try to fill out the thing. But there's a bunch of random, there's also Scunthorpe Sands. Using our incredible patented potty mouth, trademark technology, we've developed a font that automatically blocks swearing which i am intrigued by um but yeah so it, it looks like these uh these guys have a lot of cool little stuff they built and made this fun website but i do like that about the ad blocker that they said hey yeah. good job you're blocking ads because they don't have any ads so they don't care so one of the things that's interesting about this is it feels like if it fills the void that was created by the lack of flash player there used to be a oh, million yeah. Flash games out there, and it's like, oh, now now not even Adobe <laughs> supports Flash anymore. So what what are we going to do with our time? Well, we go to s- sites like vol.wtf, and <laughs> we just do different things. Like one here is how disgusting are you? We asked 423, and I think that number goes up as they ask more people, about their hygiene habits. See how you compare, and you can... Mm. Ask questions like, how often do you bathe? How often do you change the sheets? How often do you change your pillowcase? How often do you vacuum and all those things? Uh, and just dumb. I could skew that one for yeah. sure. <laughs> no, it's going to be, everyone is less disgusting than Nate. Yes. Yes. Uh, anyway, it's just uh, such a fun site. I have yeah, not even scratched the surface. Oh, yeah. Of all the little things they have. What's it's- your highest note? Sing and find out. So, yeah, all these just <laughs> crazy little weird um utility so i'm i'm going to spend some more time there thank you for finding that one for us yes and i will pre-thank you for your picks of the week well i'll get to that in a moment but a vol just to sit just oh yes real time follow-up it is a small rodent that are relative to lemmings and hamsters so it's a little okay little rodent creature so you're welcome america and the world Mm -hmm. okay so let's get on to this uh pick of the week um i was working with a coworker the other day and uh, we were killing some time waiting for her computer to update. And I said, do you got any games you've been playing lately on your phone? You know, um, I don't know what got us on topic. And she says, yes, I've been playing 1010. And I'm like, Oh, I remember that little ginger fellow with his little dog who runs around solving crimes. And she's like, no, 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 no. One, zero, one, zero, 10, 10. Uh. And the one that she got me, uh, was because there's a million of course if you type in one zero one zero you're going to get a million things this is ten ten one zero one zero exclamation point block puzzle game and it's got a red cube now there are going to be other options out there mm-hmm. and they may be better or they may be worse but this is the one if you do a search on your iphone that i came up with and uh this is not dissimilar to a game some people might be familiar with called 2048. Oh yes. Or threes in its in its surface. But it, it actually is more like Tetris. So imagine 2048 and Tetris had a baby. Mm-hmm. What you do is you have a grid, various shapes will drop down in the play field, and you c- cannot rotate them. They're fixed in their rotation, but you can move them around and what you try to do is to complete the line on the bottom or the line up the side and they'll disappear. Mm. So it's it's basically a slidey version of Tetris with fewer options, but it's called 1010. So if you're looking for a new time waster, it's one of those games it's like, well this isn't very challenging, but as you start to play you're like, "Oh, oh okay, I see. It dropped here and I should have dropped it there." And now it's at the top and I ran out of spots and, you know, it, it, it's dropping a shape that's just so weird I'll never be able to get it in. And so, it, again, you can t- kind of turn your brain off to play this thing, but it does ramp up quite quickly. So 1010 exclamation point block puzzle game if you are interested in a new time waster. Very nice. Well, my pick of the week this week, uh, last week, I think we both kind of had upgrade picks and mine is um, sort of like that. It's not made by the same company, but you might remember if you've been listening to the show for a long time, that in a previous episode, I had the pick of the week of the Glyph, G-L-I-F, quick release tripod mount for smartphones. And I purchased one for both of us. I forget. I think we were celebrating some Mm -hmm. something or something. Milestone. 
Yes, um, but it is a great little tripod mount for your smartphone and it slides open, then it kind of locks into place and it has a couple different little uh, tripod mounts for the different ways you want to mount it. Well, I'm not picking that one again. Oh, I was going to say, I have one right here and I actually considered picking it today. I'm like, this thing is so useful. <laughs> yes, yes. But I have in my hand the Wuhotu and the actual Amazon product name is the metal phone tripod mount with cold shoe Wuhotu 360 rotation compatible with the iPhone 11, 12 Pro Max tripod mount Sam Samsung not even spelled right <laughs> smartphone mount holder adapter cell phone video clamp video rig so this is an upgrade pick if you do a lot of photos if you've got a lot of accessories uh for your phone and use your phone to do that kind of stuff this thing is well built it has uh, a dial to lock in the the stretchy um or expandable phone clip and it goes pretty wide fits my 12 pro max without problem then down the back here it has four tripod mounts so like mm. the smart rig little adapters you got me for christmas i could attach those on here put lights on there and then it's got um on the bottom it's a quick release and it has tripod mounts there and it has a cold shoe mount on the top if you have accessories that use that and it's mm really nice metal it's really sturdy uh i heard it mentioned on mac break weekly and um i purchased one of these got it this week and this is just a very nice thing and it's actually cheaper than the the glyph now mm -hmm. if you're casual the glyph's probably going to do you all right i think this is 28 bucks uh but this one the Wu Hotu. 23 bucks and i think that might have even gone up a little bit since it was mentioned on that podcast <laughs> i think they could uh realize they could charge a little bit more yeah. um huh yeah it is a very nice very sturdy if you're looking to take your uh, iphone photos or videography to the next game i would highly recommend this little champ yeah now the difference between that and the glyft are the glyft is made of plastic yeah so it's going to be a little bit lighter it's a little more yeah. compact and it also has a uh, quarter 20 tripod mount on the top, the bottom, and on one of the sides. But the additional quarter 20 ports on that doodad seem to make it more useful. And of course, the cold shoe mount is built in. It's not something you'd have to add separately like the glyph. So it's very well thought out. Yeah. yeah. And it's got, you know, you can rotate so you can do vertical or horizontal. Uh, and there's another hidden little quarter 20 there for your standard tripod. And it's got the quarter 20 and the, what is it? Three eighths, 20, whatever so. the other one is. The big fat one for like a lighting stand. Yes. Yeah. So a uh, nice little device to have in your toolkit, if that's something that is important to you. Very cool. So Nate, his recommendation can help you work better and my recommendation can help you play better. So Jeez. it's a win-win. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Mm -hmm. uh, well, our Amazon purchase of the week, we love it when you guys use our Amazon links because we're greedy and we like money. Um, <laughs> that is not what we get out of it. A uh, little bit here. It does help out. Uh, pay it's, for... it's true though. I am greedy and like money. I mean... Well, yes, yes, that is uh part of it um, but i also enjoy looking through the anonymous reports and this one might have been you dave okay somebody purchased this week the polywatch 6417084129062 ss0130590000 plastic watch crystal scratch remover polish tool 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 well and it I think that might be a misnomer, like putting your whole UPC and your product name mm -hmm. on Amazon. So actually, Nate, this was me. Woohoo! This is a small tube of plastic polish, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, being the cavalier person that I am, and for those of you, you, I don't think I'll, you can see it because I have it cropped, but I have my Oculus Quest here in the background. Well, I noticed... Again, due to my lack of carefulness and cavalier attitude, that there was some scratches developing from my glasses oh, no. or the way I put it in the, yeah. the case or something. And I'm like, I thought these lenses were glass. No, no, no. They're plastic lenses. Oh. And so they're very susceptible 
to scratches. And so, I mean, to keep the cost down, I'm, it makes sense that they're plastic yeah. lenses, but yeah. I was a little disappointed nonetheless. It's like at least put a plastic sticker over it that can be replaced or something. Yeah. You know? So, um, I was like, I'm like, I just got this thing and now there's going to be like a smudge. It looks like a smudge when you're wearing it, but oh. it's a little tiny scratch. So I did a bunch of research, found out online that yes, this worked. I was highly skeptical, <laughs> highly, because I yes. had tried things like this in the past. And so I even took the time to mask off the rest of my lens, even though they said coat the whole lens. I'm like, mm -hmm. nope, no, nope, not, not going to do it. The lens, you know? <laughs> uh, so I just did the part, did my little thing. And I noticed, you know, it's actually starting to, to fade and to avoid digging a triangular shaped ditch in my lens, which would cause other problems. I yes. did go ahead and take the masking tape off and kind of did the whole lens mm -hmm. a little bit so that it's an even grind, but it worked really well. Um, another, I guess a pro tip you want to hit the bell is I had a CD ROM sitting around with some scratches on it. I tested it on that first just to see how it would behave. So if you have plastic lenses for your glasses or something else, you might want to in, in conspicuous area, try something, but I was just like, you know what? I got to go for it. It seems to be working. So I was able to get rid of the, the scratch on the lens. It worked it quite looks well. Like, what is it? A, oh, it's a five gram tube. So listeners at home, Dave, I'm going to set you up for success on this one. Yeah. Hey, Dave, what would you pay for the PolyWatch plastic <laughs> scratch remover? I don't remember exactly what it cost, <laughs> oh, but on. I think at it was, least be close. It was like it was between seven ninety five and eight bucks. It uh, seven forty five is what it's oh, currently at. Seven forty five. So, okay, hey, I thought that's it was seven ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, seven, seven and a half bucks will get you one of these things. So it's designed for a wristwatch that has a plastic lens, like an old Casio. It would buff the scratches out rather well. Someone said they tried it on their Apple watch. I would not try it on my Apple mm. watch. That is a glass yes. with some type of coating on there. It's just going to remove your coating. Um, so anyway, yeah, I recommend the product. It worked quite well. And so now it's in my, so if you at home know me, and have an Oculus Quest with scratches, don't spend seven bucks to yeah, buy a come thing. come on. I used literally a pea size of this, and I have a whole another 4.99 ounces left of it. So Nice, nice. Yeah. Share share the wealth. <laughs> uh, yeah, Waste the money in gas to yes. drive over to Dave's house and pick it up instead of getting your own tube. But no, yeah. that's a great product, and sorry if I sold a... Uh, future pick of the week from me on that <laughs> no. one but uh, i that completely was on the forgot report. about it, it caught, worked well. caught my eye yeah well with that i think we will wrap up another wonderful episode i will remind you you can catch us in audio or video form over on youtube make sure you like comment subscribe uh, all that good stuff so that we move up the algorithm of the youtubes mm -hmm. and uh, the podcast app i think we're in every podcast app including I think we're still in Spotify, even though they're not paying us anything. Uh, but we we want it to be available everywhere. And you can always head to the website to find us, notnerd.com and our pick store, all that good stuff, because we yeah. want to help you get out there and tech better. Yeah, we were all slated to go on Quibi. But they went under. Right oh, before. yeah. Quibby. <laughs> right before. That was our future. Oh, too bad. We we invested tens of dollars in that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We'll get our TikTok going soon, too. Oh, you know what? I never clapped. I'm going to clap. Okay. Okay. At least I have something.